you Jesus darkness 
those falls, it won't prevail. Cause the God I serve knows only how to triumph. My God will never fail. My God will never fail. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory for the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory for the battle belongs to you, Lord. There's power in the mighty name of Jesus. backing down from any giants. I know how this story ends. I know how this story ends. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory.
you, Jesus. Hallelujah all across this place. Lord God, we're lifting up to the things to you, Lord God, in our lives right now, Lord God, that we don't understand the circumstances, we don't understand or see how you're going to do it, Lord God, but we're trusting in your word, Lord Jesus. We're trusting in what you say and what you do, Lord God, that no matter what the, it looks like to us, God, that if we trust and lean on your word, God, you will work all things according to your will, according to your purpose, for good, Lord Jesus, to what is meant to be according to your will, Lord God. If we would stay in your will, God, we will see an outcome, Lord God. We will see, Lord Jesus, the things that you've promised, Lord God. So no matter what it seems like now, God, we're trusting in your word. We're trusting in your promise, Lord God. We know that the battle is yours, Lord God, and we can stand on your word no matter what the circumstance. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. Yes, Lord God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Worthy yes, is your name, Hallelujah. Jesus. Worthy Hallelujah. is your name, Lord God. Yes, Lord God. We praise your holy name, O oh God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Jesus, hallelujah. Come on, come on. Jesus, hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord God. Yes, Lord, we praise your holy name, Jesus. We worship all that you are, Lord God. Yes, Lord, we praise your holy name. Yes, Lord. And we praise your holy name. Praise the Lord, saints. Ask Brother Stephen if he'll come and receive an offering. Pray, brother. Lord God, I want to thank you for this time in your presence. Lord, that we might seek you and learn of you. As we bring these tithes and these offerings yes, to your storehouse, our Lord, pray that you bless it and sanctify it. This gospel message might be spread. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, brother. Brother Stephen's coming by. If he'll take out your Bibles, turn to Mark chapter 11. God, we praise you, we worship you, we thank you. Hmm. Always an honor to be able to stand here and share the word of God with you. Honor to pastor, him and sister Tina made it safely down to Florida. Honor to everybody here tonight. Honor to my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We sing that song, I'm going to see a victory. <clears throat> the thing, we claim that we're going to see a victory, but we've got to be willing to grab a hold of that victory. We can't just say, well, God's got it in control, and we just sit back and let him do all the work. See, we're called here for a purpose. What I'm actually going to talk about tonight might, might mess with some of our theology a little bit. And it hit me hard trying to think of, <laughs> what do you mean, God? Where do I go with this? Over this past few, few weeks, I, I've been praying, been thinking, meditating. It's 
different things that I've heard, different sermons that I've been listening to, and got me scratching my head and say, God, how can this be? How can these things be going on? And he just asked me one simple question. Are you willing to believe? We say we believe. We know what the word of God says, but do we act on it? We've got, a, we've, got, we've got a strong hold of what we need to do for ourselves, of how we need to keep ourselves on the, on the right path, how we need to keep ourselves w- within our, 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 our boundaries and with, within our, oh, I even preached on I can't remember what they're called, Guard, guardrails. But that's not where it ends. That's just the starting point to put us into a place to actually fight the battle that we've been called to fight. To do more than just trying to, to, to stay on a straight and narrow path. We've, we've got to be able to dig in and be, be willing to actually start fighting true spiritual battles. Not just in our minds, but true spiritual battles. That, that There is so much more in store for every Christian that is filled with the Holy Ghost, baptized in Jesus' name, that we just leave laying there. That, that it's kind of like getting that brand new phone and, and, and it's got all these new things. It's like a, a walking computer in your pocket, but you're just using it as a flip phone and you're not using all the tools that, that are, are right there at, at you. Mark 11, 22, 24, it says, And Jesus answering said unto them, Have faith in God. For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever ye desire when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. Now when we're praying, when we're praying is not going before God and bringing a checklist. When we pray, we don't pray for God. We're praying for ourselves to be shaped and formed, to pull us in closer to God, that we can be more like him, that we'd be closer to him, know more of what he wants for us. That way when we're speaking his word into our lives, it can come to pass. Next scripture, John eleven forty says, Jesus said unto her, said I not unto thee, that if thou would believe, thou should see the glory of God. Again, he was talking to Mary and Martha. This is where, where he's saying, I, I'm, I'm coming to, to raise Lazarus. He's not dead. If you would just believe, you can see these miracles come to pass. John 14, 12. Verily, verily, I say unto you that he that believeth in me, the works that I do, shall he, he shall do also. And greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, and that Father, the Father may be glorified in the Son. He shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. We know that verse. But do we think it applies to us personally? Greater things shall ye do. Well, well all those things that... That, 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 that Jesus did on earth. See, it's not us doing them. It's not us. I, Matthew Sartell, could not do those things. But the God in me can. And I am just a willing vessel. I don't care if that vessel is chipped up and faded and looks terrible on the shelf. It's still going to pour out that oil just the same. But we limit God in what he can do by saying this vessel can't do that. That's, that, that's not possible. It's not comprehensible. Then we look at Acts, chapter 1, verse 8. But ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Uttermost, the extreme. Also meaning in reference last, in reference to time. The uttermost parts of the earth, the last times. You will be witness of me into the last times of the earth. But it's got the word, you shall receive power. This is the power that we put on the shelf and ignore. 
power, dunamis, strength. See, when we are filled with the Holy Ghost, we're given power. When we're baptized in Jesus' name, we're given authority to use that power. But power, some the Bible definitions of this word power said first inherent power or existing in something as a permanent or essential or characteristic attribute. Power residing in a thing by virtue of its nature or which a person or thing exerts and puts forth. Also means power for performing miracles. Moral power and excellence of soul. The power and influence which belong to riches and wealth. Power and resources arising from numbers. See, when you're baptized into that family, you are not alone. I don't care what's going on. You've got, the, you, you, you've got numbers all around you. Everybody is, is born into one family. And then finally, power consisting in or resting upon armies, forces, and hosts. But too often we look at these things where we're going to do greater things. We'll, we'll have power. That, that means we, we, we put it into our own personal walk. And we stop it there. But I want to say that's not what we're called to do. Is, yes, we're, that's number one. That's step one. Get yourself in. You've got to get into the training. You've got to go into boot camp. And you've got to get walking right, know how to work. But then you actually go out and march and get into the battlefield. You can't say, I'm going to... I'm." I'm going to see a victory, but then sit back and wait, let everybody else fight the battle. You've got to be prepared and ready to walk out and ready to fight. An example of what I'm talking about, Mark 9, 14. And when he came to his disciples, he saw a great multitude about them and the scribes questioning with them. Straight away, all the people, when they beheld him, were greatly amazed and running to him, saluted him. And he asked the scribes, what question you with them? Why are you questioning my boys? And one of the multitude answered and said, Master, I have brought unto thee my son, which hath a dumb spirit. And wheresoever he taketh him, he teareth him, and he foameth, and gnasheth with his teeth, and pineth away. And I spake to thy disciples that they should cast him out, and they could not. And he answered him and said, O faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him unto me. Who's he talking to? Why can't the disciples do it? Why, why the, the people that, that, that have been given the authority directly by God in the flesh go out and do these things. They're saying, I, I can't do this. Why? Because they start seeing what's going on and that intimidation factor comes in. And say, I, I, we, we can't handle this. How is this going to be possible? How are we going to break this down? And he asked his father, how long is it ago since this came unto him? I'm sorry, verse 20. And they brought him unto him, and when he saw him straightway, the spirit tear him. And he fell on the ground and wallowed foaming. And he asked his father, how long is it ago since this came unto him? And he said, of a child. And oft times it hath cast him into the fire and into the waters to destroy him. But if thou canst do anything, have compassion on us and help us. That's where we fall. We have our own walk. We, we, we get so strong that, that we're, we're walking right. We're doing what God wants us to do. We're trying to live a good, holy, humble life. But then when we go and we see a miracle needs to take place or we see things where we can speak the word of God into the situation and actually visually see things change before our eyes, the plea is, well, if you can do something, please do it. Jesus said unto him, if thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. Do you truly believe that everything in this word is real? This is something that I keep. It's such, such a weight when I, when I read these things that so many people look to the Bible as a fairy tale or good stories or something that can just make us feel good. Yeah, it's a great way to live, but this is real life. This is real life of what happened and what can still happen if you'll just believe. And straight away, the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe, but help thou mine unbelief. So you've got to come to the realization 
you know what, it's not where it needs to be. Lord, help me. So when you don't have that belief to actually go out and speak the word of God, speak with the power and the authority that has been given to you by being filled with the Holy Ghost, by being baptized in Jesus' name, when you make the revelation, hey, I'm not where I need to be, Lord, I believe, but help me. Help my unbelief. Help it to grow stronger. Stir something in me that I can be bold and believe and speak out. <clears throat> when Jesus saw that the people came running together, he rebuked the foul spirit, saying unto him, Thou dumb and deaf spirit, I charge thee. Come out of him and enter no more into him. He charged him. Why? Because he is God. He is Jesus. So we can go into the exact same situation and say, I command you in the name of Jesus, come out of that child. Can we do that? Amen. Or do we get scared and say, no, that's going to be the pastor. I can't do that. That's going to be the man with a little gold card that says that, that he's going to let, no. I don't care who you, you got the Holy Ghost, you got that same God that was walking robed in flesh. It's not something different. That, that's what we got to get beyond. Jesus, Jesus is the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is in us. But we, we have a hard time, maybe it's just me, maybe I have a hard time uh, of grabbing a hold of that, that when I'm filled with the Holy Ghost, I'm literally filled with the same God that was robed in the flesh, that walked on earth and did all these things. If he is within me and moving through me, and I am a willing vessel to pour him out, greater things shall I do. Are you willing to believe? Well, subtitle, more in 24. We, if we want to see a mighty move of God, especially in the Northeast, where there is so much darkness, so many spirits that are from hell guarding over so much of this area, that those of us that are filled with the Spirit need to let that light shine and speak His name into every situation, every town, every community, every place that we walk into and let His Spirit move. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted, uh, and the Spirit cried and rent him sore and came out of him, and he was one as one dead, insomuch that many said he is dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up, and he arose. And when he came into the house, his disciples asked him privately, Why could we not cast him out? And he said unto them, This kind can come forth by nothing but prayer and fasting. So does that mean when, okay, I've got to speak the name of God, I've got to speak, speak, speak the name of Jesus into this situation. I've got, I got to go on a three-day fast. Hold on. I'll be right back. Prayer and fasting. Fasting does not twist God's arm into doing something. Prayer is not a time to start begging God for him to do something. Prayer and fasting is if we are in continual prayer and fasting, we are continually shaping ourselves. When we fast, it's, it's not fasting trying to get God's. God already sees you. When you're fasting, you're trying to get all that other junk out that is causing you to not believe. All that other junk, all those other thoughts, all those other voices that are going on inside of your head, you're trying to silence them down so you can just hear the word of God speaking, so that you can just be moved by the Spirit. You can speak what God wants to be spoken to. But when we're not fasting, when we're not in prayer, we're letting everything else build us up and fill us up and move, and we start speaking things that are not of God. That's what's great about the, this media fast. It's, it's never easy the first, first week. I know I had to go through my phone and start deleting things off my phone because it's just habit. You just start opening things up on your phone and like, oh, man. You realize, wow, I'm putting a lot of junk in my head. Maybe we should go back to the flip phones. <laughs> But when you're fasting, you're putting yourself into submission to God. It's about making the vessel so that it is usable, so that you're wash washing away all the other stuff that gets in the way. <clears throat> so we know what the Word of God says. We read the stories every day in our devotionals. We hear them preached at church. But do we truly believe them, that they are real life, that they truly happened? And do we believe that they are still happening today? 
a belief. The world will define belief as an opinion based on senses. That's fine, you can believe that, but I believe my own thing. I say knowledge is just based on facts. It's the idea of saying, I can believe that I'm the best basketball player ever. I am not. But I can say that I believe it, but when I say belief, and belief in the word of God, it's belief in the facts that you know that this is truth. That you know that this is immovable. This is what I base everything else off of. You have to have, the, in order for you to live for God and to, to be that soldier that, that God has called us to be, this needs to be your foundation, immovable. That I don't care what anyone says. I don't care if I've got everybody else in the world telling me it's wrong. Immovable. I will not be moved. Biblical belief in truth, and there's only one truth. Word of God. We need to know it inside and out, but beyond that, it needs to become who we are. We can't separate our Bible knowledge from what we believe. So yes, we have the knowledge, but also too often we can get all this knowledge inside and it just sits there. Okay, so you got all the word, you got everything in you, great. Now put it into action. Put it into have that actionable faith. If you believe what the word of God says, then why are you not willing? Why are you, you nervous to actually lift out your hand and say, gold and silver have I none, but rise up and walk. I'm talking to myself. You walk into that cafe, something pricks your heart and says, you should probably go talk to that guy and pray with him. Like, I don't know him. He's going to think I'm stupid. And you walk, you walk the other way. Maybe that's just me. Maybe I'm a wimp. But there, there's been times where, where you overcome that and you sit down and like, wow, God just, you can feel the Holy Ghost moving as soon as you, you walk up and sit down. But I know there's been plenty of times where God's put that little prick and I should have stopped and I didn't. And then it always sits like, what if I just said one word? If I just said one word? You've got to be willing to, to put it into action. That we have that same God that created the universe inside of us. Just waiting, asking to be poured out on everybody that we come in contact with. See, we, we now, we are the lights of the world. It said that he is the light. And if he is in us, we are now supposed to be that light. We are now supposed to be casting out God's light everywhere we go. We can't just take that light and say, I got that light. I'm going to stand here. No darkness is going to come in. Great. Now you got to walk out and you're going to give that light to somebody else. you got to walk up and be bold enough to say, I'm going to spread this light in. you got to be bold enough to say, I got that light. I got the God in me. I'm going to speak to you, devil. I'm going to speak to you, principalities. I'm going to speak to you, things that in high places, I'm going to cast you down in the name of Jesus. Here's the thing, if you say that with belief in your heart, it's going to actually start moving things. But if you start saying that like, well, I think I should, no, you've got to be bold and have that strong belief. Are you willing to believe that you have that power that Jesus said he would give you? Do you believe? Do you believe what you can't explain? Are you willing to believe the things that you could never imagine? Do you believe... That miracles still exist. See, we heard some testimonies recently of people's eyes suddenly growing back in their head. People's legs that have been atrophied suddenly growing back right in front of them. I'm going to be real with you. When I hear those, there's a part of me that says, it's a great story, but it really happened? That's the flesh. That's, I asked that question. I took that in prayer. It's like, Lord, what's going on? Why, am I, why, why are these thoughts coming in? And he asked me, are you willing to believe? Do you believe that I still work the same way that, that's written in the Bible, that I still work today? Why do we not see him working all around them? Because you don't believe. We have stories of people seeing angels all around us, miracles happening in unexpected ways, but do we believe it to be real? Again, or do we just see them as exciting stories? I'll leave it at that, just a story. 
we find ourselves to be like Thomas, unless I see it with my own eyes, unless I experience it myself, how am I going to really understand that it's real? But sometimes we experience a miracle in front of us, and we forget all about it, and we go back into doubting again. And, and we, we take that power that God, is, that God has anointed us with, and we just put it back on the shelf, say, okay, you know, I'll get to it whenever I get to it. We put God in a box. We limit what he can do when we don't believe who we are in him. When we don't understand the power that he's given us with that Holy Ghost, we don't understand the authority we have when we're baptized in his name. To, to, to trample over all, all powers of the enemy. We're going to sing a song saying, I'm going to see a victory. We've, we've got to be bold enough to say, no, I'm going to see it because I'm marching out there. I'm actually fighting the battle. I'm not just going to sit back and say, yeah, God, we, we know the stories. We know what the word of God says, that, that God already conquered death, that he wins in the end. So I can just sit here, right? I can come to church. I can pray in the morning, and that's it. No, you've got to be fighting that battle beyond just trying to live a good life, a Christian life that we're supposed to. You've got to actually be fighting the battle against the principalities of, and the, the powers of darkness. We get baptized, receive the Holy Ghost, know our names are written in the book of life, and that's where we stop. We don't realize the full potential of who we are. Again, this is not to boast on us as individuals. It's to boast on the God that we have in us. Again, we know what the, words, what the word says. But are we willing to believe it? Do we believe with the knowledge that it's fact because the Bible says so? It's not a blind faith. We read, we read the word of God and we read these miracles that happen, but then... Who am I to then hear a story of it actually happening again in, in modern times and now all of a sudden I doubt, but I read it in the Bible and I say that it's real and it happens in real life. It, it, it happens in modern time and all of a sudden I start doubting. No, that's the same God working all the way through. And yes, we have that, we, we are given the same power to move, in, to, to let God move in that way. Do we believe that we truly have the same God who created the universe working through our very, our very bodies? We talk about spiritual warfare over and over again. But I think too often we relegate spiritual warfare again to our minds. We think it's just spiritual warfare is just making sure that our minds are right, that our minds are in control. And my, one of my favorite verses in 2 Corinthians, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God for the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God, bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Love that scripture. That's our personal walk. We can't stop there. We can't just let it be just about living a life and getting ourselves right. We have to understand that we're also supposed to be fighting the demons around us. We believe in God. We believe that God came robed in the flesh. We believe that he walked on the earth. He, we believe that he, 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 he lived a sinless life, died on a cross, rose three days later. Do we also believe there are actual demons walking around our, our world, our lives every day, trying to attack us and bring us down? Trying to, trying to destroy. They, they have been given authority over the world and what we're living in. Right now, they have authority over the world. That we're, we, are, we are in their territory. But the thing is, the gates of hell shall not prevail. Oh, yeah. Ephesians 6, it says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in his power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against, again, battle is not flesh and blood. One's talking about the mind. Now this is the other aspect. This is the more in 24. These are the things that we've got to start speaking against. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. What does that word mean? That means angels and demons. 
against powers. What does that mean? That means spiritual potentates. That means other spiritual beings that, that are in authority. Against rulers of the darkness of this world, the devil and his demons. Against spiritual wickedness in high places. That one's pretty straightforward. That's more than just getting your thinking straight. That's more than just getting rid of stinking thinking. Therefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. You see, if I'm going to stand, if I'm going to fight, I've got to stand and have myself gird up. Why am I putting on the armor if I'm just going to sit on the pew and just wait till the end? Stand, having your loins girded with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness, your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, take the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Those demons, those devils, those principalities, that spiritual things in high places, they're throwing everything at you. But when you truly believe, when you have that faith to keep walking through, you can push through all that nonsense and keep fighting right to the source of it, saying, I'm coming after you. I'm going to cut you down. How are we going to cut them down? And take, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. That Word of God is that, that, that sword that comes out and cuts... Every, mm. I'm reading, I'm reading a, a, a Christian fiction series right now about spiritual warfare, and it's, it's all like tied in, like, okay, I'm reading this book too, and this is just kind of stirring even more to fiction, but it's about angels and fighting back and forth and, and being able to see the, the, the swords and how the swords represent someone's, someone's faith. It's different colors and all these different things. We have to have that, that, that big, broad sword when they see, the, the, the demons can see what our armor looks like. How prepared are you? Or is it just kind of sloppily put together? Is your sword dull? Is it kind of just laying around? It's got some rust on it. Yeah, sure, it's a sword. It can move. I can maybe split some wood with it. But is it really going to work when it goes into battle? Or is it going to break in half on the first thrust? When those fiery darts come in, is your shield all kind of broken down and tattered that it's, gonna, it's not going to cover everything around you? It's not going to cover your, your other brothers and sisters that are linked arms with you? Your helmet of salvation, knowing for a fact what the word of God says, that your hope is in, the, in, that, in that helmet of salvation. Your hope is in, in things above that you're not taken down so, so that your, your thinking is secure, so that you can fight and not be brought down. Your feet shod with the gospel of peace so that everywhere you walk, you are leaving a, a trail of peace behind you. Or is it all just sloppily put together? Do you believe? Do you believe? Are you willing to believe? So we're in a war. We're called to be soldiers. And we're just cowering down, knowing we're on the winning side, thinking that we've done enough. I'm going to say, <clears throat> devil loves a Christian that is willing to stop at being baptized. Sure, they're sealed with the Holy Ghost, but they aren't causing any other trouble. You want, to, you want to be filled with the Holy Ghost and just go to church and not do anything else? Sure, you can pray, sit there and pray, but, but not truly enact what the Word of God says. Not tr why, why do we see so many things with the apostles happening? Why do we see God working in so many ways? Why do we see all these people that are so hungry in all these other nations? Miracles happening left and right. Because they truly believe. They, are, they have a true hunger for more. Look at the Hebrews. Pharaoh saw how large the population was getting. And he was afraid of what would happen if they ever realized how big they were, that they could easily overthrow the empire. Imagine if everybody that was filled with the Holy Ghost truly realized the authority and the power that we are walking with and went up against the devil. And his, There's only one-third of the angels that went with them. We've got all the other angels on our side. Being that we're on God's side. What's it say in Exodus? It says in Exodus 1, verse 8, 
Now there arose up a new king over Egypt who knew not Joseph. And he said unto his people, Behold, the people of the children of Israel are more and mightier than we. Come on, let us deal wisely with them, lest they multiply and it come to pass when there befalleth any war that they join also unto our enemies and fight against us. So get them up out of the land. Therefore they set over them taskmasters to afflict them with their burdens. And they built for Pharaoh treasure cities, fit them in Ramses. But the more they afflicted him, the more they multiplied and grew. And they were grieved because of the children of Israel. And the Egyptians made the children of Israel serve with rigor. And they made their lives bitter with hard bondage in mortar and in brick and in all manner of service in the field. All their service wherein they made them serve was with rigor. I'm going to say that we are living in Egypt. And Satan is Pharaoh. He knows. <laughs> he knows the power that we have. He knows the authority that we have been given. He's afraid if they realize what they've got, they're going to overthrow everything. So what happens? That's, that's w w when all of those troubles come on. That's when all of that, those attacks start coming in. That's when all those things start beating us down that it gets a little bit harder to walk. We got a little stronger temptation coming over here. We've got all these other things going on. <sighs> yes, it's a spiritual battles, our, our personal walks trying to get us stronger. But even with our dying breath, we should be swinging that sword, saying, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus Christ. I, I, I don't care what's going on, but I'm going to go down swinging. We need to know who we are. We need to know our full potential. Again, we know what the word says, but are we willing to believe? Are we acting on that belief? Do we know that it's for each and every one of us? Back to spiritual warfare. We talk about the battles we face. We talk, we talk about the warfare, but warfare isn't just us. Warfare isn't just us personally. Warfare isn't even just us in the church. But, but warfare is also amongst the angels. We talk about demons and spiritual things and evil, evil wickedness in high places. But do, do we really believe that there are angels in this room right now with us? That phrase right there, thinking about it, made me like, hey, what? This is getting weird. But what's the Bible say? We, we look at Joshua. Joshua saw, what did Joshua see before he went into battle? An angel. Whose side are you on? I'm on the Lord's side, but. An angel was there to tell Gideon that he's a mighty man of valor. Psalm 91, 11 says, For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. Do we believe what the word of God says? We've got angels around us. They're here. They're here right now. I can't see them. <laughs> but this has been something that I've been battling with for the last few weeks. The, I don't see it, but the word of God says it's there. So i got to say, Lord... Lord God, send your ministering angels. Let them come. Let them work. Let them work in a mighty way, Lord God. And I'm going to keep on walking. Yeah. The, Psalm 34 and 7. The angel of the Lord encampeth round them that fear him and delivereth them. Do you fear God? Do you fear the Lord? You get angels around you. What does that mean? That means, I don't know why you're afraid of anything. You get angels around you. And surround you to keep you safe, to, to, to keep you going. Yes, God, God is in control. Jesus is almighty in control of everything. But he created the angels to be ministering spirits to us. That is part of our walk as a Christian. This is where I'm going to mess with the theology a little bit. Matthew 18 and 10, take heed that you despise not one of these little ones, for I say unto you that in heaven their angels do always behold the face of my Father which is in heaven. Who's angels? Kids' angels. 
We got our own personal angels. Hebrews 13 and 2, be not forgetful to entertain strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels unawares. Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation? Are you an heir of salvation? Then you have angels coming to minister to you. Behold, I send an angel before thee to keep thee in thy way, to bring thee into places which I have prepared. Exodus 23 and 20. Matthew 4 and 11. Then the devil leaveth him, and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. It goes on. Right there we stop. Jesus ministered by angels. Jesus is God robed in the flesh. Took on man, took on, on, on the robe of man. He didn't take any special privileges. Do you agree with me with that? Everything he had is the same exact thing that every other man and woman has in this world. Yeah? He faced the same things. He was just sinless. He didn't take any special things. So it, it, all these words say that, that we have angels to minister. If those angels came and ministered to Jesus, we can have that same thing. But we talk spiritual warfare. Well, it's just not going to be filled with the Holy Ghost and talk with the Holy Ghost. Yes, you are filled with the Holy Ghost. You have the power. But you are not fighting alone. You're fighting with your brothers and sisters in Christ. But you are also fighting with these angels all around you. Again, something this has recently gotten on my radar, I'm going to be honest, never really put them into my reality. When I started listening to more, and ser more sermons. There's, a, there's a, a, a preacher out there, Lee Stone King. Listening to one of his sermons really caught me. I'm like, what is this guy preaching about? I don't like it when I first listening, started listening. Like, why, why, are we why are we preaching about angels? That's a real thing, and that is something that what's going back to the word, I'll give you power. Power consisting in or resting upon armies, forces, and hosts. I will give you power. <laughs> you have that power. You, you are created to, to, to be in charge of those angels. I'm not saying that we can sit there and direct angels what to do. That's where we pray to God and God moves in, in a way. But we've got to understand when we are fighting spiritual warfare, we have that arsenal behind us. When you go into prayer, it's not just you walking. Lord God, send your angels before me. Send your angels into the situation, Lord God. Let them move in a mighty way because you already know the demons are there moving on the hearts and minds. I see it in all my students walking through those hallways. It's like that kid's got a spirit, that kid's got a spirit, that kid's got a spirit. The Lord, <laughs> I want you to send an angel home with him. I want you to send an angel home with her. L L Lord God, I want you to stir on them. But not only that, I, I want that angel to be there to start fighting back as those demons come in and attack. Again, we, are, we do not pray to angels. Is the biggest disclaimer. We do not pray to angels. We don't have them at our beckoning call, but they are still all around us, ministering, helping us to fight, helping us to continue to move on. I still remember a, a testimony, I think it was Brother Jeffers that, that talked about. He was in, in a few-day fast at the church over in the vineyard. And they were coming in, there was a woman there that, that was trying to get the Holy Ghost, and she kept going, kept going, kept going, couldn't, wasn't being filled with the Holy Ghost. And then he saw two angels standing on the sides of the church. And as they were praying, the angels came in and stood around her. Then suddenly she was filled with the Holy Ghost. And afterward, Brother Jeffers, I think I'm getting this right, Brother Jeffers went in prayer and said, Lord, I thought angels couldn't pray people for the Holy Ghost. He said, they didn't pray for her to get the Holy Ghost. They stood guard to keep the other enemies, the other demons, and the other thoughts out so that she could be filled with my spirit. That, that's, we, <laughs> we have those angels fighting for us around us. We need to understand that and see into the spiritual realm what is really going on. It is not just a feel-good thing in a way that I kind of want to live so that I can get into heaven. 
uh, but, but we got to fight a true battle here in the spiritual realm while we're walking. It's got to go beyond just going to church and having some prayer time in the morning and say, okay, I'm good, and giving into the offering plate. But we've got to start fighting that battle and pushing back those spirits of darkness. Jesus said, greater things shall ye do. Jesus did some great things. I think when we hear that verse, though, I know one thing that comes to my mind every time I hear that verse, I say, well, that, that means that we'll pray for people and they'll be filled with the Holy Ghost. Sure, that's part of it. That's just part of it. What happened in Acts chapter 5? By the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonders wrought among the people. And they were all with one accord in Solomon's porch. And the rest searched, no man joined himself to them, but the people magnified them. And believers were the more added to the Lord multitudes, both men and women. <clears throat> and so much that they brought forth the sick into the streets and laid them on beds and couches, that at the least the shadow of Peter passing by might overshadow some of them. There came also a multitude of them out of cities round unto Jerusalem, bringing sick folks, they that which were vexed with unclean spirits, and they were healed, every one. Now, we are not supposed to rejoice because these miracle signs and wonders happen. We should be rejoicing because our names are written in the book of life. That doesn't change the fact that we should be expecting more if we truly believe. If we truly grab hold of the authority and the power that has been given to us by being filled with the Holy Spirit. But that, that, takes, that takes a lot. Because we've got to get over the thing, well... Who am I? I can't do You can't. <laughs> you try to do that, you're going to end up with, with, with your clothes thrown off and the devil's throwing you out into the street saying, I know them, I know them, I don't know you. Because it's not about us. When we walk in filled with that spirit knowing that I walk in the name of Jesus Christ, every demon's going to cower down. Every he, demon's going to get... So, I've seen demons. It's not something I always talk about. And when you speak to it, ooh, when that Holy Ghost moves and you know that they hear it, that's a story for another time. Keep you guessing. So we see Jesus do all these things. We see the apostles doing the same things. We have the same exact God living in us. But we limit what God can do when we don't work to our full potential. We're leaving so many things unused, so many tools in the arsenal that God has given us when he filled us with the Holy Ghost. The greater question with are you willing to believe is have we just fallen into a religion? Has going to church, being filled with the Holy Ghost, being baptized in Jesus' name, and just following procedure become a religion? I'm going to tell you, when God's moving and working the miracles like that in the Bible, like that in all these other countries, like that in all these other stories that come, they're not having a religion. They're having that relationship where God is moving. God can work. God can move miracles when you get beyond this is just what we do. I don't want to be a Pharisee. I don't want to be living just a good life to, to, to live a good life. But I want to be that soldier that God has called me to be. And the only way to do that is to truly believe. We're called. We're called for more, than, for, for more. The question tonight is, are you willing to believe? Stand with me tonight. This altar's open. If, you, if you're willing to believe, if you're willing to step out and go a little bit deeper, 
This isn't, this isn't milk. This isn't the milk of, of you've got to repent. You've got to, yes, you've got to repent. You've got to be baptized. You, you've got to come, to come to God. But we are called for spiritual warfare and to fight some battles. Here's the thing. When you start fighting those battles, they're going to start fighting back. So you've got to be prepared that you are standing on that firm foundation. That your shield of faith is up and ready to take those fiery darts. Because the devil's not going to go down happy and say, oh, it's all right. It's all right. You know what? They finally woke up. But they're going to start fighting back. But I'm going to say it's time, church. I don't care if it's just a handful. All it takes is one. It takes one spark to start moving. Oh, Lord God. Hallelujah. Jesus. Lord God, stir in a mighty way, Lord God. Help us to believe, Lord God. Oh, koto soto yoko, sato yoko. Oh. Jesus, we praise your holy name. Lord God, let us be prepared, Lord God. Oh, Lord God. That we may stand sure-footed, Lord God. That we may walk, Lord God. When the enemy pushes back, Lord God, as we stand girded, Lord Jesus, that we continue to press forward, Lord God. For we see a victory, Lord God. Gird up every mind, Lord God. Gird up every heart, oh God. It's a call to war, oh God. We will not stand by, Lord God. Oh, Toyokota Satoyoko. Oh, Lord God, we declare the victory, Lord Jesus. Oh, we will fight, Lord God. Hey, we will speak your name, Lord God. Oh, help us, Lord. Help us to understand the full arsenal that you've given before us, Lord God. Oh, Lord God, Hatoyoko. Hey, Lord God, help us to understand our full potential, Lord God. All that you have for us, Lord God. All that we are in you, Lord God. Give us a vision, Lord God, that we may see. Oh, yes, Lord God, the spiritual giants that we are, Lord God. That we may rise up, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God. We praise your holy name, Jesus. Oh, we worship you, Lord God. Yes, Lord God. Hato yoko to soto yoko. Lord God, we praise you. Lord God, as we leave this place, let your word be on our hearts. Let your word be on our minds, Lord God. Help us to stand firm, Lord God, as, as we believe, Lord God. As we are willing to believe if there's any doubt. Lord God, help us in our unbelief. But Lord God, gird us up, Lord, as we fight. As we fight, as we push back those gates, Lord God. For the gates of hell shall not prevail, Lord God. Give us the strength to be sure-footed that we will not be pushed back. Lord God, gird us up. Let us have a, a spiritual strength that we have never known before, Lord God. We praise you. We worship you. In Jesus' name, amen your neighbor and ask him, are you willing to believe?